This is Mario with MIA Microflight, and these are some of the parts that I received uh, from uh, my brother-in-law, actually, who uh, was trying to learn um, or trying to teach his grandsons how to fly radio control models. He bought the Aero Scout, and they ended up uh, crashing the model. I believe they got some flights uh, from the model, but maybe they were trying some uh, different maneuvers. I don't know the whole details, except that I received a box of parts. And he told me, do whatever you want with these parts. You know, I know you're into uh, radio control. So I decided to basically see if I can uh, revamp this, uh, all, all the parts in a much, much better model that I'm going to be discussing in detail as we go further in the, into this video. But this is an introduction to this um, uh, Aero Scout as, as I received from a crash. And I believe after seeing some uh, videos online of the Aero Scout, many people are experiencing the same thing. They're crashing the model in half, basically totaling the model, where they have to go back and get another body or wing stabilizers and basically rebuild the model from scratch. So, <clears throat> considering all those things, I decided to bring one of my ultralights. This is an ultralight that uh, I recently put together based on an older ultralight that I had, a pusher design, but it was made out of wood, wood uh, square um, sticks. I did that many, many years ago, and I had it for a while. I never flew it, really, um, but uh, I did have the design, and so I decided to take the opportunity, since th this was allowing me the opportunity to do a pusher design, to uh, take my older uh, model and revamp it, make it even better, more sturdier, you know, with a, a carbon frame, and uh, just go a little more spiffy. And what you're seeing is the result of that uh, work in this model here. This is almost 100% complete. I still need to tweak it a little bit here and there, but I'm working as, uh, as I'm working some of these parts, refining them in consideration also uh, for a kit that people can buy to um, facelift their uh, Aero Scout, make it a lot lighter, more durable, and uh, very spiffy, as you can see here, for a model about the same size as the Aero Sports here. Um, this um, printout, you can see the grid line here. I talk about the grid lines in um, more detail in the next portion of this video, so I won't talk too much about that, but this is how I got started here, finding the dimension and scaling this up to a size where I could have a um, good reference of the Aero Scout, not having the, the, the foam parts uh, with this model. It was a little bit trickier to determine the type of crash and what happened, what could have happened, but I eventually, uh, when you do that type of investigative work, you eventually find out the reason for the mishap and how and the model crashed and, and you know what um, what happened from from there. For example, analyzing some of these uh, plywood parts that hold some of the servos at the bottom section. You know the the front end was the first thing to go. So the, I believe this model encountered a nose dive and hit the the nose, as vi many videos show of other people crashing the the, the model. You know, there are videos that show the models uh, working fine, and then they hit their own switch or something happens and that's not supposed to happen, and boom, the model goes down. First thing that goes is the nose section. That whole nose section gets split in half. So there are better ways to, to do models. And so this is one way right here that I'm presenting here. This is the MIA Microflight way. And for those that are familiar with our products, you'll 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 understand where I'm coming from and, and why the particular uh, design and shape is very similar to uh, some other products that we have done over the years. And so I follow the same formula, formulas that work, that are truly, truly uh, uh, make the models uh, very, very durable. I design for longevity. I don't design for you to uh, come back and buy parts from me. I design so that one time only you buy the model and you can have it for many, many years. Uh, looking at the Scout, I did a little bit of research on this model and um, at least you sent me the manual, which is uh, very nice. I was able to get some dimensions of the aircraft and uh, I wrote them down right there, as you see them there basically measure actual dimensions and then I scaled it up by 8.62 which uh, came out to be uh, the uh, um, scaling factor for the actual size and how I got the actual size was uh, by measurements of the, uh, they, they give you the dimensions of the wing and the, the length of the aircraft but without having the aircraft in front of me it was a little bit difficult to find out what really happened 
Uh, I do have uh, an idea of what happened here, just based on the uh, the, uh, the way these parts are, um, some of these parts are broken. Pretty much the whole uh, electronic uh, system is intact, except for one servo that uh, connects to the steering wheel. So I'm assuming that uh, this came down nose first, and uh, it cracked in half because that's where the that's where the servo plate cracked. You know, looking at the uh, the actual setup of the Aero Scout uh, electronics for the elevator and uh, steering servos, elevator uh, rudder and steering servos, which are on the same bottom plate. So, judging from that, I uh, realized that this model uh, encountered that type of a crash. Looking at other videos of similar uh, mishaps and crashes, basically the same thing happens. So, uh, I guess it's a breakpoint for this particular aircraft right there and that's where most people that are crashing the, this aircraft are encountering uh, they're crashing the motor cracking it right in half there goes the servo for the steering and there goes the, the plate for the the uh, elevator and uh, rudder so um, I decided to basically do my own uh, diagram here you can see this is done by the square method I basically took a took some uh, photographs, or not photographs, but printouts of the actual um, Aero Scout and decided to uh, outline it with a, a grid system which gave me the, uh, the scaling factor so that I could trace this on, on this piece of paper here that you see here. So that's the Aero Scout in full size done in the way that I just mentioned. And so this gave me a good idea of the model, the size, and what I could work from and see if I can rebuild this model. Now, I don't want to rebuild it exactly the same. Uh, this is more for my brother-in-law that I wanted to give him back. Uh, you know, he's, he was nice enough to send me the parts, so I want to give him uh, a nice aircraft that, that will be super, super durable and ultra, ultra lightweight so that him and his uh, grandsons can uh, maneuver this with a lot more ease than the actual aircraft. So this is what I came up with. Now, Anybody that knows MIA Microflight knows that I've been making ultralights of this caliber for many, many years. I've been doing this since uh, 2000 and way beyond that. Uh, I used to do that, uh, but I didn't uh, bring out the kits until uh, the later part of uh, 2003, right after the micro helicopter frenzy started to uh, slow down a little bit. So I decided to bring all my ultralights here. And this is the way I make my ultralights. Very lightweight and I make them out of carbon. Uh, frames with um, either nylon sails or foam wings. In this case, it's a foam wing just for uh, to keep it a little more simple because sewing a wing it takes a little bit of uh, effort. And although this is uh, this this could work very well with my wings that I supply with the MIA Quicksilver style ultralights or similar ultralights that I saw in kit form, uh, basically the same dimensions I follow because it's been a, a proven uh, size. Um, proven wings and so I keep reusing those same components. This particular one um, I decided to do 3D printed uh, connectors here. Typically my connectors are uh, the trademark hardware that uh, I use such as what you see here that's um, MIA trademark hardware with the flex press fit connectors that's standard on many of my products but on this one I decided to do uh, 3D printed ones and these came out a little bit bulky but I refined these so I'm, as, as I'm doing this video, I'm reprinting this, so those will be for my, my brother-in-law's uh, kids. Um, I'm making two of them, so uh, he'll have two kids uh, to, to play with, and uh, hopefully they'll, uh, they'll enjoy this uh, many times. Now, this uh, particular uh, ultralight, the way it came out, it's, it, it, it's a pusher design, okay, so the, the motor goes at the back. But it's a little bit different than the Aerolite in the sense that the Aerolite uses this little tiny motor here and uh, they u it uses uh, three cells to propel this. Uh, this is a high KB uh, small size prop. This one uses a little bit um, uh, lower KB but it's a much bigger prop. It's an 8x4 uh, prop. So an 8x4 versus 5x3 five by, five by I think it's this, this propeller. So you have a little more uh, uh, more 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 uh, torque with this, and, and uh, you don't need uh, even two three cells with, with my ultralights because they're so lightweight, and because of the mo the type of motors and uh, uh, propellers that I use. So that is the the key behind MIA Microflight Microlights Ultralights. In fact, this is the same motor and propeller that I use on my RC Microlights.
the the five foot wing, 60 inch uh, wingspan, uh, RC Micro Lights, the Easy 1.25. So I'm going to be calling this one the MIA Easy 1.25 Ultralight, okay, because it's basically um, based around that same reference as far as the electronics, as far as the, the propeller, the thrust uh, power, and the size. This is going to be a, uh, a 50 inch wing. Um, my ultralights are 60 inch wing. Uh, you don't need to go too big of, uh, of a wing here. And I kept it uh, smaller just for uh, to make it more compact so they, they can put it inside a, a small car. Even though the other ones also will fit inside a small car. But this is the uh, this is my pusher design. You can see where I'm placing the motor here, and this is a proven also design. I've done this in, in uh, a smaller scale, and you can see my videos on my YouTube channel of the uh, 1S one cell uh, smaller um, slow flyers that are flying in front of my cul de sac in my backyard. Sometimes I fly them in the park when I have time, but they're they're, they're the little ones, so they're proven designs. And so what I've done is basically uh, go, gone back to that. Um, uh, those designs and uh, revamp those for a much bigger micro light or uh, ultra light rather in this case that uh, somebody uh, just starting out can uh, benefit from uh, like I said the uh, the key here is the weight the weight factor this is super super lightweight super lightweight and if you crash even if you crash this you're not going to do much damage to it because of the way I designed the uh, the airframe you, know, you can see here everything is triangulated to a point here and everything is reinforced and this is the reason why I also use these parts here because they're, they're, they're one, one time use parts they have to be CA glued with the carbon rods but once this is assembled it, it makes for a really really sturdy frame um, and because you don't have the added mass and weight on this aircraft that, that you would otherwise have with this Aero Scout uh, and because it's not foam, you're not going to break this since people are doing this right here. So a huge difference between the MIA Microflight uh, uh, products and these mass-produced uh, products that they come out from the bigger companies. It's just the way I like designing things and I started this, uh, you know, with, uh, with the desire to have a super, super tough uh, uh, aircraft, radio control aircraft that, I, that not only is, uh, performs well, is uh, highly durable, and it also looks very realistic and, and very nice when it's when it's done. You can see the model. Um, I'll take some other photographs and, and videos when this is uh, pretty much finalized. But pardon the mess. I wanted to capture this. I've been working uh, diligently on, on this particular uh, uh, aircraft uh, because I do want to offer also this to um, users of the AeroScout that may want to do something similar. So I'm going to be offering this in, in a kit form. And basically, you can even use your own wings. This is quarter inch uh, foam board that you can purchase pretty much anywhere you know very inexpensively and just to keep the cost down I uh, the target here with this particular uh, product that I'm working on is to uh, offer it as a full kit you'll be able to uh, pretty much put this together in less than maybe a half hour just because everything connects everything press fit and connect they do have to be uh, CA glued these these carbon rods with uh, 3d printed parts once you're done with the frame the main frame, you know, the, the wings is, is very easy because everything just plugs directly and, and bolts. It's a plug and bolt system here. And the reason I do this is so that it, the user can have the uh, ability to remove this, uh, repair, and real easy. With this guy right here, you know, when you buy products like this, you know, one, one crack, that's it. It takes a lot more time to, to be able to put this together back into even if you buy another one like that. So with my particular products you need to do that it's very very simple very easy to connect and as you can see here and you and anybody that has my one of my products can attest to that because uh, I've been doing this for a while uh, and so I've learned uh, you know, what not to do and in, in what uh, what works uh, best you know for beginners the design in itself it's it's a great design this particular uh, uh, model that I'm showing here uh, very fresh, very brand new, but it's based uh, on a lot of experience that I've acquired, you know, designing ultralights in particular, radio control ultralights, Mia Microflight as being the uh, the pioneer in doing uh, radio control microlights 
and uh, nobody had micro lights and um, on, until uh, recently people have been uh, paying attention to the logic and, uh, and reasoning behind you know having a micro light for the reasons I explained you know more durable uh, more crash proof uh, or lighter you can use uh, lighter batteries etc uh, there have been uh, other people that have tried uh, ultra lights in particular but uh, they were not successful because they were not built you know to the, the standards that I build them the other benefit as I was saying besides the design um, that you have is the technology that's embedded in these uh, components so if you were using this technology that came with the uh, Aero Scout um, you already know that this has self stabilization and it's got some other some other nice features embedded in that technology that allows first time users to uh, explore the model and learn with a greater safety margin as well as a uh, uh, a little easier you know on the on the hand reflexes so the idea with this one is that you can use the same components here all you have to do is remove them and reinstall them on the uh, on the areas that um, I will note in the instructions were to install but basically all the electronics are going to go at the bottom here now on the Aero Scout uh, a, a key point uh, to mention is that the uh, on the Aero Scout they have um, the receiver and the ESC in line with the motor up here, okay? So anytime that you put a weight uh, at the top section of the wing, you're creating a, a sort of a top-heavy aircraft. I don't like putting anything on top uh, unless I really need to, like servos perhaps. But the idea is to uh, concentrate all the way at the bottom. This is your thrust line, if you will. If you were to hold your motor here and try to pivot the left and right, if the wing is too heavy, the model's gonna want to tip over on you. Okay, now with uh, automatic stabilization, then that can compensate for that. But still, you know, model should be designed, you know, high wing like that should be designed with the concentration of the weight at the bottom, not half at the bottom, half at the top. By design, they had to do this. I can understand why they did that. What I would have done is I would have made the motor leads a little bit longer and brought the ESC at the bottom here, with the, along with the receiver at the bottom, and that way you don't have. This mass that really doesn't benefit having mass on top of the wing. You know, if you imagine that being your thrust line, and that's where your mo model is basically uh, your your reference. If you pivot, if you hold your model like that, it should not pivot wing heavy. So it should be stable with a pendulum effect at the bottom section of the the aircraft. Given that some of the designs, uh, you know, you have to um, um, bypass some of those things by nature of the design for a high wing uh, model such as this one you uh, a pusher or even a tractor a puller you want to concentrate the weight at the bottom just a common sense uh, rule of thumb so anyway this is the MIA microflight easy 1.25 uh, RC ultralight in a uh, pusher uh, style to um, allow anybody that has uh, broken the Aerosport and wants to uh, upgrade the Aerosport to a lighter, a true ultralight model and even operated it uh, uh, two cells. You know, you can uh, do what I'm doing here with this particular airframe, pardon the mess here. Um, I will have another video there, I will show this in, uh, in a little more cleaner area, but this is, uh, I've been working very diligently on, on this model and that's the reason why I have all these parts and this is just how I work. Sometimes I, I need a palette of colors and I mix things in, uh, here and there and I need bolts and nuts and you know I can't be too tidy you know when, when I do this. Now once the model is assembled then, then the tidiness comes into play. But this is uh, during um, product development here and this is how crazy I, it gets you know sometimes when I develop products. So uh, reusing your equipment, basically you're going to reuse pretty much everything. Uh, this model will have ailerons, I'm working on that. Uh, uh, connectors for the ailerons and we'll, we'll have very much the same connections that uh, you can reuse from your Aero Scout here. So I will um, um, make uh, the, the location of the servos very similar to this. You're not going to be using this, you're not going to need these parts right here. So you will be using the, the MIA Microfly parts. So. Um, the landing gear, you know, this landing gear is a, it's, it's a, it's a very nice landing gear, but being aluminum, this is very thin aluminum. Uh, it's lightweight. Uh, you're not going to beat this. You're not going to be wire. You know, it's a spring wire, or, or music wire. So it's, 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 it's called. You know, this thing right here will take a lot more abuse than this, and it will not bend, and you will not have to rebend it again. 
So, and this is also a proven landing gear, and the way I do my landing gear with these 3D printed parts is also a MIA Microflight trademark way of doing the landing gear. And I came up with this because in the past I used to, um, some of my ultralights and microlights, they were braced. They had a rod here and they had a rod here, and that was to brace the landing gear until I came up with this particular 3D printed part that uh, houses the um, uh, one-piece axle, landing gear axle, in, in place, and you don't need the, the, these extra bracing rods for that. It keeps it lighter, keeps it clean, keeps it very, very simple. Fortunately, this is a very nice landing gear. You, you could reuse the, even the same wheels if you want, but I'll, I'll be supplying my, my own wheels. These are very speedy wheels. Uh, very lightweight too. These are lighter than these guys right here even and so But you could use those wheels if you like those wheels um, I wouldn't recommend using this uh, landing gear because there's no I mean you, you could attach it to this part right here uh, But I would keep it like this recommend highly that you keep that wire because it's a lot more crash proof and, and durable than, than this aluminum uh, spiffy um, landing gear here so you won't be using this you won't be using any of this carbon rod or uh, injection molded parts here because you don't need to um, I supply my own uh, very simple ways this is very complex here what they did here and I, I don't understand some of these manufacturers how they these designers of products how they do parts like this you know I, I understand that this has a particular design that you have to meet and you can see that, that se this section right here or the tail section is is that black part right there now they're going coming around here and up here and then allowing it for uh, to have a, a little center section to, to pivot the, the whole uh, elevator here you know my my rule of thumb with designing aircraft is the more traditional and basic setup you keep it the easier it is to fix the easier it is to repair something because it's not as complex as this. You know, what am I going to do with this? I, I could reuse it, but I, it's very, very, very customized to that particular design of the of the body. So I won't be using this. It's just too much. Way, way overkill. Way overkill. You don't need to go like that. A simple, a simple setup like this will work fine. And you'll notice that this is hinged by just by tape. It's a foamy tape, hinged by tape with a typical V uh, groove uh, at the bottom. Uh, and that's all you need. You know, there's, there's the ALR, very simple, very fluid, and easy, easy. The key here is easy to repair. In case you, let's say you crash, you, you break this, I, I've readily broken tail section or damaged tail sections, you know, in my ultralights. Most of the time, what takes the impact is the front end. So the front end has to be designed uh, properly and uh, robust, okay? But this section here really gets damaged. But even if it, this was to get damaged, I mean, all you have to do is remove these bolts right here, remove this part, top portion, remove the bottom portion, and basically you can make your own. You, you can cut your own. You're not at the mercy of having to buy another body like that, having to wait for for the body. You, you know, you can make your own. The key here is I like to allow the user to make his own. Keep the frame, keep everything else intact. And these parts, if you need to re uh, redo it, you can redo it yourself. Same thing with the wing, very easy. This is just a camber wing, you know, quarter inch foam. And it's been taped with a uh, color tape to reinforce the, uh, the, the the material a little bit better. Also a proven, uh, a proven method. Many uh, uh, part flyers and uh, do-it-yourself ultralights use the, the very same uh, methods of uh, covering with tape. You can even wrap the tape around. I didn't in this case, but you can do that for extra uh, reinforcement uh, and basically the simpler you keep your wings the simpler you keep your your model the better it is for you from uh, a lot of uh, beneficial uh, factors so basically this is uh, where I'm at right now and some of the foam parts you know there, there's that foam parts it's, it's molded I mean it's great that it's molded in mass manufacturing you can you can do that you can you know spend uh, thousands in molds and, and get a nice um, nice model like this but the problem is you know people crash these things it breaks you know you you have to come back and buy a, a model you may as well buy an, another one for the cost of this uh, this aircraft and it gives you all the electronics and everything so in order to avoid all those issues you know I make my models like this and I, I don't expect people to come back and, and buy uh, new frames from me they, they never do because my frames are so durable and uh, my key when I established my micro flight was you know make the model solid so it gets um, uh, a lot of long longevity and use uh, out of the model I mean I have rarely rarely had a customer come in and buy uh, tubing or carbon rods or parts from me because 
you know, you can you can see the frame right here. In how much damage do you think you can do to a frame like this? Carbon rods. All carbon, all carbon structure triangulated uh, sections, very ultralight. And on top of that, it's a super ultralight. So, uh, you know, just keep those things in mind. This is Mario with MIA Microflight, and these are my parts for the MIA ultralight 1.25 pusher design as a uh, in answer to the Aero Scout. Uh, uh, upgrades, if you will, if you want to upgrade your AeroScout, uh, you can reuse all the electronics with safe technology in this particular puppy right here that I designed. And I designed this uh, with my brother in law in mind and his uh, grandsons because he sent me all the parts initially. And if, if he hadn't sent me the parts, uh, what was left over of the model, basically all the electronics. I would not have engulfed myself in designing this uh, particular uh, model, and I did it uh, with him in mind and his kids, because his uh, ki uh, his grandsons rather are 10 years old, around 10 years old, a couple little little guys there. So I did this uh, so they can learn how to fly this and uh, reuse the same electronics of the Aeroscouts. So in this process, I decided to uh, offer this um, kit to anybody that has uh, an Aeroscout and wants to do similar. But you can see the aircraft here uses. 3D printed parts. These are all custom designed from scratch. Everything's from scratch here. And it also has uh, some uh, MIA trademark uh, hardware parts that I consistently use in all my products uh, ultra lights, micro lights, auto gyros, helicopters, land yachts, etc. So this is the model. You can see how spiffy and very lightweight this model is. You could actually fly this model on two cells. Instead of the three, you could use the original motor. I forgot to mention that in my earlier videos. Uh, you could use the, the original motor because that is a 3S uh, 5x3 prop. Operates on three cells, uh, LiPo. It's a higher KV motor, but if you go with a motor such as this one, you can use an 8x4 prop, higher torque, and you can get away with two cells, even lighter, even better, you know, for learning to fly and, and uh, preventing uh, any mishaps. Even if you crash this model, you are not gonna damage it uh, to the degree, uh, in fact, uh, probably not at all, uh, as you do, you would the Aerosport. You know, if everybody that has crashed that model uh, will attest that that model cracks in half when you hit the, the ground. And, you know, things can go wrong. You hit the wrong switch, uh, you know, even with the safe technology, if you're not um, savvy with that or you're not prepared or you forget something, a uh, mishap can happen. And so even with a mishap on this model, you are not going to... They're not going to create much damage or damage at all because of the way I designed this. It's so triangulated, as you can see it in this in this uh, drawing here. Very much, it follows in the same tradition as the MI Microflight uh, Easy uh, line of uh, products and designs. If you look at my ultralights and auto gyros, in particularly, you can see it's got this basically the same components. You can see here, right there. I just popped the uh, the canopy in the seat, and the way I make the seat and the canopies, these are all corrugated plastic and I do that also for durability you know if you make this out of balsa or foam uh, those parts are not going to last very long and as they get uh, used and abused or in a crash so that's the reason why I used these particular parts the wings the tail sections are all uh, foam and basically you can build this yourself using quarter inch foam that you can get at the dollar store or you at Michael's any art uh, supply store you can get them uh, you can get quarter inch foam board and this is how this is done, it's just to allow the user the flexibility to, um, uh, to repair this himself and not have to uh, deal with a, uh, a custom molded uh, design such as the Aerosport. I mean, you can buy the parts and, and rebuild your model, but it's going to take you a lot more time. And, and then, do, you, do you want a model that's going to crack in, in half you know, or has the possibility of cracking in half again in a mishap? No, you don't want that. So that's the reason why I designed this particular uh, model. And it's in the very style of the MIA uh, easy line of uh, products done the MIA micro flight weight. The way I like designing things here, you can see the parts already laid out. We're printing and I'm printing the parts as we are talking. You know, all the parts are, are right there. So you'll get all the parts, you'll get all the carbon rods. And uh, I haven't decided yet on the wings how I'm going to do the wings. I could supply the wings already. Uh, Pre-bent because this is just a camber flat wing. It works beautifully on ultralights like such as this one. 
and these are just flat panels very 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 simple so this is uh, what I'm gearing towards and this is uh, I just wanted to give uh, my uh, viewers uh, this information so keep in tune because I will have more as I finish fine-tuning and just completing the kit for this particular uh, upgrade if you will to the Aerosport from Javi Zone Mario once again with my Michael Fight. thanks for watching